My name is Mr. Tom, and I'm a resource teacher with the Office of Science. And welcome to the PowerPoint on growing your own food. Not a new idea, but an idea that could help your family eat healthy or just have fun learning about plants during these unprecedented times. This PowerPoint will introduce you to ideas for growing food in a variety of ways, provide resources for tips, and make some educational connections along the way. Victory Gardens were first introduced over 100 years ago during World War I. They were initiated as a way for families to grow and harvest their own food due to a food shortage caused by this war. Our Victory Gardens are designed to get us outside and growing foods to keep us healthy. There are many places on any given day where healthy, fresh produce is scarce. These areas are called food deserts. Having a garden of any size can help to reduce these food deserts. A green thumb means the ability to grow plants. A lot of people worry that they don't have a green thumb and they can't grow plants. Well, that's just silly. Most people realize that after they try, they can grow plants. So take a deep breath and let's get started. It's time to decide what type of garden you can have. You might have a small space indoors or an outdoor area for containers. You might even have an area where the garden can be planted in the ground. Whatever options you have, and trust me, everyone has options, the garden will be a fun learning experience for your entire family. The next step will be taking an inventory of supplies you have available at your home. As you view the slides and use online resources to aid your garden plans, you're going to be able to determine what type of garden you want to start. Families can use grid paper to create a diagram of a container garden. The plants you and your family select can grow in containers such as flower pots, cups, even storage bins and shoe boxes, for example. If you would like to grow these plants indoors, something called a grow light will provide the light needed until the warmer days are here. The containers can be kept outside once the last frost has passed in zone six or seven, and that's us here in Baltimore County. That typically means after Mother's Day, but keep an eye on the weather just in case. When growing in planter pots, cups, or other containers, it's important to use potting mix rather than regular soil. Potting mix allows the roots to move easily, prevents something called root rot, and provides the needed air for root growth within the soil. Now check out that seed packet on your screen. It contains a lot of information. Where to plant, when to plant, how deep to plant, how far apart to plant, how much sunlight is needed, the list goes on. These seed packets also provide great opportunities for reading, mapping, and even math skills. So if you don't have a lot of space, all you really need are some containers, some soil, um, and a sunny spot. And the sunny spot could be your patio, your back porch, um, or even a sunny window inside your house. Um, so the, the best thing might be some old um, flower pots. If you happen to have some flower pots around the house, I have several different sizes here. Um, I have one left over from last winter that contains a plant that didn't make it, so I can actually try to reuse the soil in here as well. Um, I have, this isn't a flower pot, but this is, it looks like an old, I don't know, cauldron or something left over from Halloween years ago, but it makes a perfect pot for tomatoes. I put them in there every summer. If you don't have flower pots, totally fine. You can use some plastic containers. I have, um, this is a big storage bin, which would, um, you can plant lots of things in here. This is a small plastic shoe box. And you can see it already has some soil in it. You can use a five gallon bucket. I have one here, which would be great for some larger plants. Um, and if you don't have anything like that, you can always look in your recycle bin. So I have an old pot that um, some kind of a plant came out of it years ago, but it makes a great pot uh, for a large plant. I also have, this came out of my recycle bin. I think 
I probably had some fruit in here, but it has a handy lid. And I already had the soil in there. Um, so the lid kind of makes it a nice greenhouse until the plants start to grow. You can cut the top off of some milk containers. So this is um, a half gallon of milk and I have soil. That would work really well. Um, I always also have a, um, a smaller one. So you can put some small little seeds. And then I have a plastic milk jug and I've left the handle on it and I thought that would make a cute little plant or you can hang this on your deck or something. All right. So once we have our container all picked out, all we need to do is figure out uh, what kind of seeds we'd like to plant or plants. So I've picked out several that grow really well in containers. And I want to talk about those in just a second. So lettuce is a really easy plant to grow in a container. Um, it has a really short little root system, a small root system, and it really only needs about four inches of soil. So any kind of container you have that you can put about this much soil in will work. So I have some lettuce here that I started just a couple of weeks ago. Um, obviously way too much soil, but it was the only pot I had. So these are growing really well. This other pot here is a perfect size, a um, few inches of soil. And this came from my recycling bin and I love it because it'll fit right on my windowsill. So it can get all the sun it needs from inside my house. And this container that I found in my recycling bin that I already have soil in, I think would be the perfect little pot for growing lettuce. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to plant some lettuce. With all seeds, you wanna make sure you read the back of the packet. It has all the instructions. Uh, everything you need to know about how deep to plant it, uh, when to put it outside, um, how to water it, everything you need to know. This one says to just sprinkle the seeds over top of the soil, so that's what I'm going to do. They're just tiny little seeds. And you can overseed with some of these things because as they come up, you can thin them out. And when you pull those little plants out to thin it, to give the other plants space, um, you can actually eat those little uh, plants that you pull up too. So, and then I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of soil over the top. The instructions say just to cover it with a little layer. Tap it down. And um, I didn't bring my watering can, but you want to spritz it with a little bit of water. And anything you plant, whether it's seeds or seedlings, you want to make sure that you keep it moist. Check it every morning um, and make sure that it has plenty of water. Um, radishes are another really great plant to grow in a container. I have some here that I planted just, I think, five days ago. Radishes don't need a lot of soil, about four to six inches. Um, and the really cool thing about radishes is they grow super fast. You can plant them today, and in about three weeks, you'll be eating your radishes. Um, and they also come in lots of cool colors, not just red, but um, I actually have some white ones, some purple ones, and some red ones that I've you can um, plant peppers and tomatoes in pots. They do really well in containers, um, but not every variety. So just make sure that you read the back of the seed packet or read the instructions that come with the plant if you're buying a plant. Um, when you plant these, they like warm weather. So you wanna make sure that you're not putting them outside before May 15th, probably at the earliest. So if you're buying a plant, stick it right in your pot after May 15th. If you wanna start, um, tomatoes or peppers by seeds you can do that and you want to start them and keep them in your home for at least four weeks where they can stay nice and warm and get a nice head start before you move them outside so I planted some inside about four weeks ago and I used this kind of um, container which they're really small and my plants you can see a few that have already come up um, but they're just meant to hold the plant for about four weeks until you can move them out. And these are nice because when you're ready to plant them, you can just tear them, the little sections out, and you can put that little pot right in the ground or right in your container, um, and then you don't have to damage or worry about the root system. Um, you can also purchase other things from the store. They sell little, um, this is a tray with a lid. You can use it as a little kind of a greenhouse. It comes with these little dried out soil packs that when you put water in them, they swell up and turn into cute little pots. You could also just use a plastic cup um, and then just keep it in here until you're ready to plant it outside. Um, or you can make your own kind of biodegradable planter. Uh, these are some that I made out of a 
toilet paper roll. I just fold it up the bottom like that to build it with soil. And then these can go right in the pot as well. You don't need to worry about taking that out. So if you start in the house, um, they don't need any sunlight until the seedlings emerge, but once they do, you want to make sure that they get at least six to eight hours of sun a day. And so your house, if it's like mine, that means I have to move it from window to window to window. Mine start their day um, facing um, the east in my dining room, and then by um, late afternoon, I've moved them to the front of my house to a window in my living room so they get the western um, the sun where the sun sets. Um, when your seedlings are three to four inches tall and have at least maybe four or five leaves, then you can safely put them outside in your pot. Ground gardening, like container gardening, requires some pre-planning. Taking a look at the space you have and the plants you want to grow is best laid out on paper in the form of a simple diagram. If you don't have any seeds yet, you can use online resources for looking up the same information provided on the packets. These plants can be started indoors, but should not go into the ground until after the last frost of the season. And remember, that's about mid-May for us in Baltimore. Sounds to me that it's time to get out some paper and crayons and start planning your garden. Growing directly into the ground or in a raised bed might require soil being added to the location. Bag soil has nutrients that will help the plants flourish and also avoids using questionable soil. This is not necessary, only recommended. Soil testing is always a good idea of planting directly into the ground. This information will help your mom or dad or guardians determine if there are any contaminants in the soil. Testing through the University of Maryland Extension is mail-in and inexpensive. So remember, loosen your soil with a rake or hoe or similar type of tool before planting the seeds or small plants in your garden. My name is Natasha Nichols and I live in Chicago, Illinois, and I am the blogger and face behind the Union Avenue Community Garden, or We Sow, We Grow. The garden was created from the desire to build more community within my neighborhood. We noticed that while we were outside, so many people would walk by and never ever say hello, and we wanted people to say hello to us. So we started a community garden, and that started people saying hello. Well, I've always loved being in the garden and learning about fruits and vegetables because my grandmother in Tennessee and my grandfather's people in Mississippi all had farms and they all grew the food that we ate with them every single Sunday and that was just so amazing to me. I love knowing that I can plant this little tiny seed and from that little tiny seed and some soil and the sun and water I can feed myself and my family and the community uh, a lot more and it takes a little bit of investment but being able to grow so much food from such tiny seeds is pretty amazing to me. So here are a couple of items that I grew in my garden or I was able to get from other gardener friends and we have our red peppers which go to the red pepper shakers that you top your pizza with after it's done, our tomatoes, different varieties onions, eggplant, garlic, and zucchini. They're all things that can go on top of your pizza if you want because it's your pizza. With this garden, what happens is uh, in regular community gardens, someone from the community rents a box and whatever they grow, that's their box. This one is more of an educational, a community educational garden, and everybody gets to pick from everything. Um, as long as they work within the garden. And we want to encourage people to be responsible for their own food. And then we can eat them. Oh, and they're sweet. That's the fun of planting too. Because you get to come out and pull your stuff and then eat what you grow. Beforehand, it was nothing but uh, garbage. It was full of garbage and just kind of used as a dump. And it took a bit of uh, a mind shift for me too, 
to realize that uh, gardening isn't always pretty. I think the human part of us wants to see something that is perfectly detailed and aesthetically pleasing, but um, even though it isn't, you see that we had a bunch of um, vegetables growing that I didn't even have to plant. Uh, I still had to take care of them, but I didn't even have to plant them, and they came up, and we let them, and we still got food from it. So everything doesn't have to be as pretty as you want it to be, so if that, that is something that some of the students are struggling with, let them know that everything's not gonna come up perfect. It's, uh, it's nature, and nature does what it needs to do in order to, to provide you know, us with what we, what we need. And that's one of the fun parts about it too. And that was a learning moment for me. But it's doing what it's supposed to do, and that's growing food. Hey everyone, did you have fun thinking about the items that you're gonna grow on your pizza? Until next time, I want you to make sure that you continue sowing great seeds and growing great ideas. Have fun growing your pizza. Bye-bye. Not a lot of space for gardens? Just want to try something new and fun? Then take a look at do-it-yourself hydroponics. Hydroponics uses just water and air with no soil. Isn't that cool? There are many supplies that can be purchased to start your own hydroponics garden. However, using the things commonly found in your home, they work just as well. Ziploc style baggies with a paper towel. Cups with lids holding the plant in a recycled yogurt cup. A jar with a sweet potato using the cracky method of growing are just a few types of do-it-yourself hydroponics. Lima beans are a simple and easy way to learn how a seed grows. Then you can plant the seed and grow it into a lima bean plant. Nutrients added to the water is recommended, but not necessary. A simple online search of home hydroponics provides many resources and ideas. Whether you decide to use a container garden, in-ground garden, raised bed, or hydroponics, your virus victory garden is sure to be a tasty and healthy success. Remember, everyone's got a green thumb. So a really fun thing you could do without purchasing any plants or seeds at all, but still growing a vegetable garden is to kind of um, repurpose your food scraps after you've eaten um, your dinner. For example, um, if you eat a carrot, you're eating the root, typically cut off the top and you toss that away. But instead of tossing it away, you can put it in some water and it'll start to sprout um, some of the green leaves. Um, it won't grow a new carrot, the root that we eat, but it'll get lots of nice leafy greens. Um, you can cut those off and put them in a salad or you can blend them up and make some pesto, but they're really good for you. It also works really well for celery. Um, the celery stalk has just a little bit of greens coming up on it. It'll end up looking kind of like this, just a lot of leaves, but those leaves taste just like celery. Again, just chop them off and uh, put them in your salad or your soup or whatever else um, you're cooking for dinner that night. Lettuce also works. This is some romaine that I chopped off a few days ago and it's already got a few new leaves popping up. You probably won't get enough to make a great big salad, but it's enough to get a, get a taste of. Uh, do it with some green onions. Um, the green onion, we usually, you can eat the entire thing, but if you save a couple of your green onions, um, put them in water, it'll regrow the green part. And that green part, you can chop up and it tastes kind of like chives. Um, and it'll keep on regrowing. So chop it off and eat it, stick it back in water, and it'll regrow. And then the last one is herbs. Um, you can buy herbs at the grocery store or um, you can make some cuttings from somebody that has a plant. Stick it in water and you can see this one is already um, popped out a few roots just in about one week. So when it has enough roots, you can go ahead and put this in a pot and it'll grow and you'll have a nice big herb plant. 
So there you go. You can grow a vegetable garden without any seeds or plants at all.